How you doing? Thanks for joining me. This is the second part of a two-part video solving this exact circuit using now the power method. In the previous video, we went through and identified the current through each branches and added them vectorially in a horizontal vertical chart to determine the line current of our circuit and its respective phase angle at the end. What I want to do in this video is walk through the power method where we don't use current, we can actually just use uh, apparent power, reactive power to solve for the total line current at the end as well. Um, so, uh, what I've done from the previous video is I've left all the information that we were given. We had 10 ohms of impedance, 30 ohms, or sorry, um, 20 ohms of impedance on our coil at a 0.866 lagging power factor or 30 degree uh, phase angle. And we had our 176.838 microfarads, which we converted to 15 ohms of capacitive reactance. Now, when I say we have the impedance of each branch, what we need to remember is that in a purely resistive branch, my resistance will be equal to my impedance. And in a purely capacitive branch, my capacitive reactance will be equal to my impedance, which we need to use those totals um, in the next steps that we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is determine what the value of apparent power is in each one of these branches. Now, as we move forward, I'm going to prove that our resistive power or our, our apparent power in our resistive branch is equal to our true power or our watts in this branch. So first thing we're going to do for our resistive branch is we're going to choose one of our power formulas. Okay, we have our I squared times Z. We have our uh, E squared over Z and we have our I times E or our current times our voltage. We're going to choose this formula here. We're going to go with the voltage squared divided by whatever the ohmic value is. In this case, we're talking about impedance, okay? I know we have 10 ohms of resistance, but we have to remember it's equal to impedance because if I'm using the voltage across that entire load divided by the total ohmic value of that load, I will end up with in the total apparent power of that load. So voltage squared divided by our impedance of 10 ohms. In this case, we have 120 volts squared divided by 10 ohms. In this case, the S of our resistor, or the apparent power of our resistor, should be equal to, we should see 1440 VA, which is also 1440 watts, because these two are actually equal, okay? Again, it's a purely resistive load, okay? We're gonna break down our inductor now, okay? And we're gonna use the same formula. We're gonna use the impedance of our load and the voltage across our load. So we'll use our V squared over impedance. Again, we have 120 volts squared. It is a parallel circuit. So we know that we have the same voltage across each one of our components divided by the impedance of 20 ohms. Okay. And what that gives us is the apparent power of my coil. Okay. The apparent power is going to be on my hypotenuse. So we take our 120 volts squared divided by 20 we should see 720 VA, okay? So with our resistor, we still calculated the VA. It just happened that the resistant or the resistive component watts is equal to VA. It, that's not true anymore. Now we have a VA here. We have a power factor of 0.866, which we can now apply to our coil power triangle. 720 VA times the power factor of 0.866 gives us a power of our coil of 623.52 watts. Okay, and if I arc coast my power factor, okay, we have it written right here, we have a 30 degree phase angle, okay? So if I take 720 VA and I multiply it by the sine of 30 degrees, I'm gonna get my opposite side. Or, alternatively, I could, in, I could transpose my Pythagorean theorem and know that 720 VA squared minus 623.52 squared, if I square root that answer, I should end up with 360 bars. Okay, so now we have the power component for our resistor. We have the power component for our inductor. And the last one we're going to do is for our capacitor. Now, a capacitor, again, once I calculate out the reactive power of a capacitor, it's going to be equal to the VA. So again, we need to remember, if I'm calculating with my capacitor, if I take my 120 volts squared and I divide it by this 15 ohms, that 15 ohms is my capacitive reactance, but because it's a capacitor, it's also my impedance. So we end up with 120 volts squared divided by 15, we should see 
right around 960 VA, which in this case we could also say VARs because they're equal in a purely reactive load. Okay, so we have our three values. We have, well, we have more than three values. We have all of these that we're going to compare to each other. Okay, because what we're going to do now is determine our circuit power. Okay, so I'm going to build a new diagram over here where we're going to start to add all this stuff together. Now, in my circuit, if I look for in-phase components, or watts in this case, I'm going to take all the watts in my circuit and I'm going to add them together to get a total watts. I have 1440 watts from my resistor and I have this in phase 623.52 from my inductor. I'm going to add those two together to end up with a total value of watts we'll do of 2063.52 watts. And again, that's the combination of the watts from my resistor or my in phase power and I'm adding in the in-phase power from my coil as well, which gives me a total wattage on my circuit, okay? Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our out-of-phase components, our reactive power, and we're gonna compare those two together. I know that from my capacitor, I have a leading 960 VARs, and from my inductor, we calculated that we have 360 VARs lagging okay and when I put these two together I know that these lagging VARs are going to cancel out some of these leading VARs and vice versa however you want to look at it but either way these 360 VARs are going to cancel out 360 of these leading VARs okay so 960 minus 300 we end up with a net we're going to call it Q net or reactive net of 600 VARs okay so now, if we think about this, we have a total in-phase component. We have a net out-of-phase component. We can use this to build a circuit power triangle. Okay, so we're going to move over here. We know that we have, again, 2,063.52 watts. We have, oh, this should be the other way, sorry, because it is a leading circuit. Okay. The way that I can tell it's a leading circuit just by looking at it is we have far more leading VARs than we do lagging. So we're going to end up up here. Okay? So we have our 600 VARs. That's our total reactive power, and those are 600 leading VARs, which means our power factor will be leading in the end as well. Pythagorean's theorem, I have 2,063.52 watts squared plus 600 watts, or sorry, VARs squared. The square root of that answer should be the new VA of my circuit. We should see 2148.98 VA. Okay, so S is equal to 2148.98 VA. And I told you at the beginning we're going to use this to calculate line current, which we are. This is my total apparent power of my circuit, and I know this. Apparent power, this is one of my formulas, is I total times E. If I transpose that formula, I should see that I total equals S divided by E. Or in this case, we have our 2148.98 VA divided by our source voltage of 120 volts should give us the exact same amount of current that we had in the previous video, 17.908 amps at, well, the last thing we have to do is we're going to figure out what our power factor is and that will help us determine our phase angle as well. If I take my power factor, I'm just going to do it right here, it's getting pretty busy on here, is equal to power over apparent power and in this case we have 2063.52 divided by our apparent power of 2148. 0.98, we end up with a power factor, again, similar to the previous video, of 0.96 lead, which if we arc coast that, we should see an angle of 16.211 degrees. There we go. We've determined that if I'm thinking about my supply current or my line current, I know based off of this calculation that my supply current is leading my 
source voltage by 16.211 degrees. So hopefully this has helped you in your steps towards solving a parallel RLC. As I mentioned before, um, if you prefer the current method, the video that I've done previously is the exact same circuit using individual branch currents, a horizontal vertical chart, as well as looking at the Cartesian plane to solve for that total current in the end. But they do work out to the same answer. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.